Well, I've debated this for over a year and finally decided to install a winch on the Gladiator. There have been times when it would been handy to have, so now, it's time to install this Badlands Apex winch. This means that I'll have to remove the three-piece, aftermarket steel bumper that I installed last year. I really needed to remove the bumper anyhow, because I'll be changing the housing for the amber running lights and I need to replace the cheap doorman you nuts that are already rusting. As always, I'll leave links in the description of all parts used on this project. These are all of the parts that came with the three-piece bumper. The parts that are outlined in blue are the parts I'll need to install to mount the winch. One part that I did order was the Fairlead plate for the front of the bumper. Mopar part number 8221552AB. This replaces the plastic cover. Here are the new U nuts that I'll be replacing the rusty Dorman U nuts with. Stay away from Dorman products. They really don't stand up to the test of time. And this is the Mopar Fairlead plate that will replace the plastic cover on the front of the bumper. Okay, let's unbox this thing and see what we've gotten ourselves into. I won't be using a lot of these parts. According to the manual, there are different wiring configurations for different winches. I'll go into more detail once we start the install. We'll look at these components a little closer as we install them. For now, I just want to make sure that everything is packaged and that nothing is damaged. So far, so good. Everything looks like it's there and nothing is damaged. More bits and pieces. Everything looks pretty straightforward though, I'm really looking forward to installing this winch. This is the winch plate that came with the aftermarket bumper. It looks like it should work without any issue, but I want to make sure that the mounting holes line up properly with the winch. It looks like everything is going to line up perfectly. Here are a couple of other parts that will be used to secure the mounting plate. Of course, this bumper did not come with instructions. I'm sure that with a little trial and error, we'll figure it out. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. I was using these plugs to secure the running lights to the bumper. Basically, I drilled a hole in the center, then inserted the running light housing. This worked fine, but I think the housing for the parking sensors would work better. 
it's a much cleaner look. Okay, today's the day. Let's get this winch installed. I'm attempting this by myself at first, if I run into any issues later, I'll have to wait for my son to get off of work. I'll start by removing the close-out panel. I won't go into great detail with the bumper removal, I've already covered it in a previous video. Of course, we won't be reusing the close-out panel after the winch is installed. Next, I'll disconnect the wiring for the off-road lights, the amber running lights, and the fog lights. I'll remove this plate first because it'll give me better access to the inside mounting nuts of the bumper. We won't be reusing this part either. Here are those crappy Dorman U nuts I need to swap out. I'll never use a Dorman product again. Now I'll remove the bolts that secure the OEM Rubicon skid plate. I believe these are 17 millimeter. Once the winch plate is installed, I'll have to alter the skid plate just a bit. Again, I'm doing this by myself for now, but it'd be nice to have an extra set of hands. Back to unplugging all of the lights on the bumper. Now I'll remove the nuts that secure the bumper to the frame rail. It helps to have an air ratchet or electric ratchet, but totally not necessary. I believe these are 18 millimeter nuts. I'll use some temporary nuts and bolts to secure the winch plate so I can test fit everything. Thank you. 
Now I'll install the side supports for the winch plate. I'm removing the brackets for the skid plate to do this. It's not necessary unless you drop one of the nuts for the winch plate side mount, which I did. Every winch plate is going to be different. Every bumper is going to be different. Once you see how things line up, it's not so hard to figure out. Now I'll do the other side. I'm very pleased with how everything is lining up. At first, I had my doubts about this aftermarket bumper, but I've really grown to appreciate it. Now I'll prep the winch for installation. As I mentioned before, I won't be using every part that came boxed. Everything is pretty straightforward with the wiring. Be sure to refer to the installation instructions. Later, I'll wish that this ground wire was in a different location. It's a very tight fit against the grill. And don't insult my intelligence by saying you are doing any of this for me. You don't save me. I save me. These square nuts slide into pockets on the winch. I'll use some butyl to hold them in place so they don't slide out. Even though you can't see, I'm securing the winch to the winch plate. I'm taping the positive and negative wires together just to keep them organized.
Now I'll remove those nasty dormant you nuts and replace the housing for the amber running lights. Now I'll install the fairly plate. Here, I'm running the positive and negative leads into the engine bay. I wasn't going to post this clip because I later went back and rerouted the cables. Unfortunately, that clip was corrupt. I used my floor jack to hold the winch plate in place while I removed the temporary bolts and nuts. Again, the smart thing would have been to have some extra hands to help out. Yeah, he made him very happy. I'll wait for my son to return home from work so he can help me lift the bumper into place. We'll have to move the jack as we put the bumper in place. We got the bumper put back into place and also put the skid plate back on. As I mentioned earlier, I had to modify the skid plate just a bit to make up the difference of the winch plate. The clip of the modification I did to the skid plate got corrupt, so I wasn't able to use it. Basically, I drilled two extra holes in the back of the skid plate to accommodate the difference of the winch plate. I've indicated the location with orange circles on this pick of the skid plate. So, let's talk about the reality of this install. If you made it this far into the video, you've watched 20 minutes of a 12-hour day. Yes, 12 hours. Granted, I did more than just install the winch, but this process took a lot longer than I thought it would. Again, it probably would have taken half the time if I had an extra set of hands throughout the process. All in all, it wasn't terribly hard. Besides the anticipated fitment issues, the smashed fingers and a few curse words here and there, it wasn't that bad. If you want more detail concerning the bumper removal and install, 
check out the video linked in the description. Thanks for watching the video, we really appreciate it. Please take a moment to give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and please consider subscribing to our channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, I try to respond to all comments.